place from Harlem to a Jersey. Hey, you. Here, Shut up that music, Doc, will you? Girl, that thing makes me homesick for Broadway. Oh, Here we've been stuck in this pint-sized town for nearly a month. It's enough to drive a guy goofy. So where you been all day? I've been waiting for you. Look, there's a kiss from Cinderella. From who? It's from Scanlon, and we're okay. The bootleg rap against us has been dropped, and we can go back to the big town tomorrow. Great. But what are we going to use for money when we get there? Our bootleg joint is empty, and we need dough. I've been taking care of that. Hmm. You know that barber downstairs? He looks like a cinch to me. And after the talks I've had with him, he thinks that joint of ours is a regular barber shop and not a speakeasy. But has he got any money? Uh, not much. But that kid Eddie, whose mother runs this hotel, has got some dough. I got a hunch we can do some business with him. You know, he's crazy to go to New York. I think I got him built up. Now listen, don't rush him and don't go too strong. All I can say is, somebody has got to pay our way. And all I can say is, somebody always did. Close enough for the night, Gene? Yep. And for all the business I did, I might as well have been closed up all day. You know, Eddie, we're wasting our time in a burg like this. Now, you take Kitty Lewis, for instance. She took a chance, went to New York City, and she's doing fine. Huh. Since they built that big hotel over there across the street, well, your hotel's not even making expenses. Why don't she have a customer in there for hours at a time? Most of the hicks in this town would like to cut their own hair. Well, I'm sick of this bird, too. Now, listen, I've been to New York enough to know that I belong someplace where I can do something. Well, me too. Do you know that I'm the best barber in this town? Yes. Now, you take those two fellas in room 21 that have been talking to us about going in business with them. They've got one of the best barber shops in New York City. What are we going to do about that? Are we going in partners with them? I don't know. I've told Mother about the proposition. We've talked about it three nights already. Why don't you talk to her again? I've got some money saved up. Why, they'll take us in for $5,000. All right, I'll do it. You stick around here. I'll go up and have another talk with Mother. This nine o'clock town is getting on my nerves. Okay, now listen. I'll tend to the office, and you hurry back just as soon as you can get here, will you? All right, Gene. Okay, now. How are you, mister? Now, never mind that mister stuff. Just call me Gene. <laughs> All right, Gene. <laughs> Let me have a blank check, will you? Why? Sure. Never mind that check, Dan. Give it to me tomorrow. This fellow's pretty lucky. Beat me for 400 at Rummy again. $400 for Rummy? He took me for 600 yesterday. Gee whiz. Many's the time he took me for plenty. Well, Gene, we just came down to say goodbye. We're leaving for New York in the morning. Yeah, you are? Yes. Got to get back to the big town on some business. Tomorrow, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, what about that proposition we were talking over? Don't uh, we get in on that? I'm afraid it's too much for you, Gene. I think you better let it go. Oh, no, I, I think we can arrange it. You see, Eddie's upstairs talking it over with his mother right now. Yeah? Mother, dear, I know it's a good proposition. And if you'll give me the money, I'm positive that I won't fail. Eddie, dear, 
I'm willing to give you anything. Anything in the world. But I cannot afford to risk it. You know this hotel hasn't been doing so well lately. That's just the reason I want to go, Mom. I'm positive I'll make a success of it. You'll see. Oh, please. When children leave home, they forget. Now, take Kitty Lewis, for instance. She hasn't written to you, has she? Are you sure that you're not over-anxious to be where she is? Are you? Well, naturally, I want to be near her, Mother. You don't blame me, do you? No. I don't blame you. She's a dear, sweet girl. And I know you love her. Now listen, Mom. Give me the money, please. I'll just work my head off to make a success of everything. And I'll fix it so you can take things easy for the rest of your life. Hello, who is it? Oh, wait a minute, Jean. Those two men are going to leave in the morning. You see, they didn't say a word about it. Now, I've got to see them before they leave. Where are they? Well, they're down in the lobby. Oh, Mother, let me take the money, won't you? I'm sure everything will be okay. Well, uh, why not have the gentleman come up here? All right. Uh, hello, Jean. Uh, have the gentleman come up to our rooms, will you? And listen, you come up too. Right. I know you're anxious to do something big. But I'd loan you the money at, in a moment. But I cannot afford to lose it. And you cannot afford to fail. Oh, don't you worry about me failing, Mother. I'm just sure everything's going to come out great. Come in, gentlemen. Get in, Mrs. Morgan. Mother, you know these two gentlemen, Mr. Dixon and Mr. Jackson. How do you do? How do you do? I think I've had the pleasure of meeting you. You're the gentleman in room 21, aren't you? Yes, we 21. are. 21. Well, my son's been telling me of the wonderful proposition. Yeah? It's a wonderful proposition, Mrs. Morgan. And I think a young fellow like Eddie will do great. Absolutely. You see, he means uh, two fellows like, like me and Eddie, Miss Morgan. Oh, yes, I see. Well, I, I think you're both very nice boys. Thank you. And I trust you implicitly. Oh, they're lovely fellows, Miss Morgan. I've talked to them radio since they've been here. Thank you. 
Just another reason that I want to get out of this place in this racket. If I'd have known six months ago what I know now, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. We're a couple of smart fellows. Well, we thought we were buying a respectable barber shop and get hooked into a speakeasy and a warehouse for bottle goods. Yeah. About the only thing I ever shave around this joint is labels off of bottles. It's a good thing for us they didn't try to sell a Central Park or Coney Island. Yeah. We're a couple of smart fellows. Now listen, Gene. If I didn't have my mother's money tied up in this thing, I'd quit right now. And believe me, as soon as I get even, I'm through. Well, you and me both. But you see, we got tricked into this thing, Eddie. And we got to go through with it. See, we were tricked by a couple of fine gentlemen. Yeah, we went into it too quickly. There come those two fine gentlemen now. Look out, they don't steal your watch. And how are the little town Soriel brothers today? Great. And all I ask is to get one of you birds in that chair for about a minute. Now, there's no use getting sore about it. What do you expect us to do, kiss you with the deal you handed out? Well, you've got no kick coming. We split with you. I don't want that kind of money. No. And what we bought was a regular barber shop, not a speakeasy. Well, here's your chance to have a regular shop. Did you see tonight's paper? Yes, I did. Yeah. You know, that's enough for Dan and me. You know, this town is going to be so hot from now on, you won't be able to live in it. So this joint is yours. It's in your name anyway. Well, so long, Eddie. See you in church. Come on, Chick. Oh, wait a minute, Dan. Aren't you going to say goodbye to the best little barber in the country? <laughs> I hope you two guys spend your old age in jail. Imagine those eggs. Hello? Oh, hello, Kitty. All right, honey. Well, I'll be, I'll drive over and get you in the car. I'll meet you in front of the apartment. Yeah, you have plenty of time for the show. All right. That is Kitty. I'm going over and see her. I don't know what time I'll be back. Well, at least you got somebody decent to go and talk to. I'll see you later. All right. Watch yourself, Eddie. Another bootleg murder. You see, that's why I want you to quit that business. Sooner or later, the cops are going to find out it's only, that your barber shop's only a speakeasy. There's so many other things you can do, Eddie. Oh, I know it, darling. And I am going to quit. And when I do, you quit that nightclub, too. Oh, you're right. I don't want to work there any longer than I have to. Oh, you know, Hawk Miller's always hanging around me. Hawk Miller? Hawk Miller likes me. He's my friend. And besides, he knows that you're my girl. You don't know Hawk like I do. It's me he likes. Oh, don't you be silly. He has a girl of his own, Molly. She's been his girl for years. <laughs> All right. But just remember that I told you. Now, he's all right, honey. Besides, I don't want to have any trouble with him. I expect to sell him all my stuff. Well, I want to get out of there as soon as possible. You know, it gets pretty rough. Fights, you know, and everything. I get almost afraid sometimes. 
Well, don't you be afraid of anybody, honey. Here. Look. I've had that for years. My father gave it to me to practice with when I was a kid. And if anybody annoys you, well, you just fire it in the air a couple of times and that'll scare them away. Cute, isn't it? Well, you come along, honey. It's getting late. You've got to get over to the cafe and do your stuff. All right. Let's go. I'll be glad to get it over with. Gee, I hate that place. Careful who you let in here tonight. Make sure that everybody has a card. Don't worry, Hawk. Leave it to me. Most of all, I want you. Don't you ever get bored looking at me, Eddie? Well, I get bored looking at anyone else but you. In fact, I don't like anyone looking at you. You know, I believe you're jealous. You believe I'm jealous? And why shouldn't I be of the prettiest girl in the world? You know, someday, I'm going to have a nightclub all of my own. With no one in it to watch you but me. Oh, no. You promised that we were all finished with nightclubs. Didn't you, Eddie? That's right, I did. Well, that's settled. Now run along, dear, because I have to dress. Uh, how about a little kiss? Now, I'll run out and get my ringside seat. I'll be seeing you. the master of ceremonies 
feels the song coming on, and this is that horrible moment. You know that terrible time? And the girl, she leans over to the rest court and she says, Daddy, give that boy two dollars. <laughs> well, well, here it is. Long see the gold sun a sinking in the golden well. At that time I really get to thinking that I'm heaven blessed. Long see the shallow rising, that means I've had my rest. And when I wake up in the early dawning, that's the time I love the best. All morning glory, tell them stories that dawning. And every day they weep up lazy at dawn. comes a hawk. Better sit down. <clears throat> Say, listen, Hawk. I don't think we better take any chance with this stuff. You know, it's old century, don't you? You don't think. You know we're not going to take any chances when a cop has been bumped off. Well, I didn't bump him off. Don't blame it on me. Shut up. Who asked you? He was killed, wasn't he? Sure, he was killed. Well, somebody's got to take the rap. The only evidence they have is those 12 cases of old century. And it's right here in this joint. We were a bunch of saps to bring it here. We got to get rid of it. That's just what I'm going to do. And I want you to handle it for me, Tommy. What? Me? You must think I got marshmallows for brains, Hawk. Why, you poor crumb. You're scared. You're afraid to take a chance. Why don't you take it? You take it, Sam. This guy's got a streak of yellow yard wine. Me? No, no, not me. Why don't you take it? Take it yourself. You know, when it comes right down to it, you... You killed the cops, you know. We didn't have anything to do with it, did we? Shut up, will you? Will you pin those lips together and quit making those cracks about who bumped him off? Well... Get you guys a couple of megaphones. Hey, there's Eddie Morgan outside. Does that give you babies any ideas? No, but it might give you an idea. Yeah? Why? Well, you know, Eddie runs that joint over on 46th Street. You know that. And he's got a chicken that ain't so bad either. 
Maybe you could kill two birds with one stone. Why, what do you mean, Tommy? Now you don't think for a minute that I would frame any, do you? No, no, no. You wouldn't frame anybody, Hawks. No, not you. It's a mistake. Well, there's an idea there. If they find the goods here, it'll go pretty hard with you, Hawk. Yeah, and it won't go so easy for you two guys either. Now listen, if they grab Eddie, we can help him if we're on the outside, can't we? Sure, we could do that, yeah. You're always a great guy for fixing th things, Hawk. Supposing you do it. Yeah, you better leave it to me. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll leave it to you. We'll leave it right to you. You guys make a sneak. I think I got an idea. But don't leave town. Don't leave town? Why not? Well, it might look bad. Well, all right. We'll, we'll just hang around the joint, huh? If you see Eddie Morgan out there, tell him I want to see him. All right. wants you in the office. I'll see him a little bit later. Look, Eddie, you better go in now. He wants to see you right away. All right. You want to see me? Yeah. Hi, Eddie. Come on inside. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing in particular. How's everything over the shop? All right? Just fair. You know how it is. I'll tell you what I want to see about Eddie. I just got a tip from headquarters that I might be raided by federal men. Oh. And I was wondering if you wouldn't mind a few cases for me for a few hours. Till it blows over. Why, certainly. Why not? Where is it? Right here. There are only a few cases. Uh, where's your car? Right outside. Good. Oh, I see. I'll take it over right now. That's a good idea. Now take it out the back way. Here's the key. I certainly appreciate this, Eddie. Anytime at all, Hawk. Thanks. Kitty, I want to see you for a minute. But please, Mr. Miller, I have to hurry. Why the Mr. Stuff, Kitty? Why, you're the coldest proposition I ever met. Why the icicles? Well, you ought to know that high hat stuff will never get you any place with me. But I'm not trying to high hat you, Mr. Miller. But I have to make another number. Wait a minute, Kitty. I want to tip you off to something. Now you're running around with that sap Eddie Morgan and wasting your time. What can he do for you? A piking bootlegger. Who was it that took you out of the chorus, huh? Me, wasn't it? Who was it that gave you a chance to lead numbers? Me. Why, I can set you in a big show. Get you anything. 
And you run around with a baloney like that, Sim. Come on inside and sit down, huh? Oh, I can't. I have to hurry. Will you be back? I'll try. Wait a minute, Hawk. You're a hound for chicken, ain't you? Well, what do you want? Nothing much. Only this. That kid don't want any part of you. Hey, you mind your own business, will you? I'll take care of that kid. So I see. But I'm warning you to stay off. Yeah? Why? Oh, I'm just warning you, that's all. You might get indigestion from too much chicken. Well, if I get indigestion, it won't be from an old hen. Wait a minute. You didn't say that when you wanted the money to run this joint. You didn't say that when you wanted me to stick by you through all the tough times. Oh, say that, Gab, will you? Why don't you get yourself a tambourine and go out on a corner and peddle your blues? You be careful that you're not singing the blues, Hawk. You think you can pick any chicken you want and throw me back in the deck. Well, you can't do it. It ain't lucky. Who said so? I said so. Yeah? Well, you said too much. Now you understand? We're through. I'm sick and tired of you sitting around this joint day in and day out, staring and watching every move I make. Now you beat it. I have important business to attend to. So have I. comes two cops. You better duck. Well, what's on your mind, boys? Plenty. You heard about Captain Kerwin being bumped off, of course. I certainly did. There's an extra out about it. Did you land the guy that did it? No, but we will, Hawk. Well, I hope so. It's pretty tough when a cop is bumped off. They're my best friends. Yes, and it's going to be tough on the guy who did it. Well, I hope you get the dirty rat. Any ideas? No. Have you? Me? Why, what ideas would I have about a job like that? I was thinking you might know something. And if you do know, it would be a good idea to talk. Well, I ain't got nothing to say. Well, I have. This killing was a bootleg job, and it concerns liquor. Until we know who killed that cop, we're going to close every joint. Yes, this one first. Gee, that's pretty tough, boys. Well, I'd like to help you. You got any clues? Nothing much. The stuff they was after was old century. I haven't seen any before this job in two years. 
whole century. Yeah. There was a few cases missing. The ones that did the job took some of the stuff. See any around? Boys, what's the matter? Surely you don't think that I would have any stuff like that lying around that or any other stuff. We're not thinking anything, Hawk. But it's about time you began thinking. You probably could tell us plenty. So open your trap and say something. Boys, you know I'm not a squealer, don't you? You know I've always been on the up and up, don't you? Why, I wouldn't hurt a pal for the world. But when it comes to killing a cop, I'm against it. Well, well, come on. You say the guy that did the job got away with some cases of old century? Yes, yes. Well, I might be able to help you. I think... I got a clue. Where? Who? I can't say just now, but... You know where the White Way Barber Shop is, don't you? Over on 46th Street? Right. Well, you be there at 10 o'clock, and I might show you something interesting. Get me? Cops were just here. Yeah, I know they were. We saw them. What do they want? Crosby knows something. He does? Yes. Sit down. Now, we've got to cover ourselves up. I've planted the stuff in Eddie's shop. Yeah? And the dicks will be there at 10 o'clock. Uh-huh. But they must not find Eddie. What do you want us to do? I want you guys to make him disappear. Disappear? Well, certainly. If they don't find him, it will cinch everything for us. Don't you understand? What, you mean... Take him for a ride. This is Kitty. Yes. Hello, Eddie? Listen, the hawk framed you. Oh, I'm telling you, he did. I heard him. Yes. Crosby and Collins are coming down to the, 
barber shop at 10 o'clock. Yes. Oh, listen to me, Eddie, please. Is that yet? Get a load of that third page. Not bad, eh? John, all right? Certainly. Everything's Jake? Why? Oh, nothing. Just want to make sure that you had it, that's all. That ain't all, Hawk. You thought you'd put something over on me, didn't you? Why, what do you mean? Why, you're all excited about nothing. You ought to know me better than that, old pal. Haven't I always been on the up and up with you? Why, I can't understand what you mean. I mean just this. You tried to frame me. You knew the cops were looking for old century. That's the reason you wanted me to plant it in this joint. Now, don't get excited. Don't get excited. Why, somebody must be kidding you. Yeah? Well, that may be so. It may not be so. But I protected myself. You what? You got the stuff, didn't you? I told you yes. But when the cops get here... Cops? Now who said anything about cops? They don't try to pull that on me. You know the dicks will be here at... 10 o'clock. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah, well, maybe I am and maybe I'm not. That doesn't make any difference. I am just crazy enough to know that you're the guy that bumped off that cop. Why, you poor chump, you're hooked. Yes, and you're hooked good. Because when the dicks get here and find the stuff, they'll grab you. And I'll grab Kitty. Yeah, don't make me that. They'll take nobody but you. Because Kitty quit your joint tonight, and I dumped the stuff in the river. What do you think of that? Why, well, you can't get away with that stuff where you haven't got a chance. Shot the hall. Who did it? I don't know. It came from back there. Listen, we got to get him out of here. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll put him in my car and dump him along the road someplace. All Pick right. him up. All right. Give me a hand, Eddie. It's too late. What will we do? I don't know. Here, put him in that chair. Got him? Let 
Listen. Yeah. Stall as long as you can. I've got to make a getaway. Okay. Yes, sir. But uh, you'll have to wait. I just started on this gentleman. All right, I'll wait. You see, he wants a massage, too. I'll wait. All right. <coughs> yes, sir. That was certainly a great game. Made two runs in the ninth inning. Made the score two to one. Great game tomorrow, too. That's all right, old man. Go ahead and sleep. I'll wake you up when I'm through with you. about Eddie's dame, Kitty. And the Hulk goes for his rod, and then he got shot. By Eddie? Oh, I don't know who done it, but it wasn't Eddie. Eddie Morgan did it, and you know he did it. Where is he? I don't know. Where is he? Oh, he went out that door. Collins, take charge. I'll grab this guy, Eddie, before he knows where he stands. Listen, Chief, honest to God, I don't know. Oh, listen, listen, listen. I wasn't in on the play. I don't know nothing. Well, what are you squawking about? Everything will be all right. I know. Calm yourself. Gotta get out of here now, quickly. Pack up the things and let's go. I know. Hawk Miller. How do you know? Well, you don't it. What do you want with me, Mr. Crosby? I haven't done nothing. Of course you have. You must take me for an awful boob. I just left your barber shop. Mark Miller is dead. He was killed with this. Come on. Let's go. Oh, no. Don't take him. He didn't do it. Honest, he didn't do it. No? Then who did? Why? Keep quiet, Kitty. She doesn't have to say anything. Neither do you. I got proof enough to send you to the chair. Come on. Both of you.
wait a minute, Crosby. You've got the wrong people. What do you mean? I mean, they've got nothing to do with the killing of Baltimore. How do you know? I, I guess I'm the one person who ought to know because I did it. You? I don't believe. He was your man, wasn't he? Yes. He was my man. But no, I loved him. But I couldn't stand his loving somebody else. When he told me he was through with me, I... I made up my mind he was through with all women. So when Kitty here was doing a number, I, I went to a dressing room and took a gun and followed him to the barber shop. Then, then I heard him tell Eddie he was going to kill him and take his girl. Oh, I, I must have gone mad. I was jealous. I was crazy. I, I killed him. <laughs> he was no good. But I loved him. Well, he's gone now. So I can tell you without double crossing. He was the one who killed the policeman, Tom Burton. He did? He did. Well, that's all. Come on, let's get it over with. I'm not afraid. I've lived. And I've loved. And I've lost. <laughs> Molly, you're all right. You certainly saved these kids. You both will take my tip and get out of this city. Don't you see how close you've been to tragedy? Get out. Take a train to the country where there's trees and flowers and mountains. Leave the roaring forties to roar without. You're right, Mr. Crosby. We're going to leave the first chance we get. We've made our minds up. We want to do right for each other and everyone else. There's no luck in anything else. Right. Come on, Molly. I don't think it's going to be so tough for you. There was a reward for the killer, dead or alive. Besides, you've saved the state a lot of expense, the cost of an electrocution. I'm going to see that you get a break. And I don't think you've got much to worry about. Don't forget the train to the country. Honey, we'll fly. <laughs> <laughs>